Hello, um, let me actually find your name here again. Um, darn it, my camera's screwing up again. Uh, sorry. Hello, Taylor J. Adams. This is the practitioner here. Um, I'd actually like to contradict uh, one point that you made. Uh, you said that I seemed more atheistic as opposed to, um, uh, I was more rationalistic and atheistic uh, than theistic. Um, rationalistic, yes. Atheistic, no. Um, the major, uh, if you actually look on Wikipedia, which talks about, um, if you actually t uh, take a look at the classifications according to uh, Wikipedia for, um, uh, which are referenced from other places, let me actually find it here. Wikipedia, um, on agnosticism, there is an entry. Uh, the, there is a definition called mild agnosticism, which is that we cannot know at the present time um, whether or not, uh, let me actually find the exact definition here. Let me type it in. Agnosticism. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Ah, here we go. Um, types of agnosticism. Strong agnosticism. Uh, strong agnosticism uh, refers to the view uh, that the question of God's existence or non-existence or of God's or uh, and that nature or the ultimate reality is unknowable by our natural ability to verify um, uh, anything. A strong agnostic would say, "I don't know. Uh, I don't know whether God exists, and neither do you." Um, now, here's the interesting bit. Weak agnosticism is the view that the existence of God or non-existence of God is currently unknown, but is not necessarily unknowable is not necessarily unknowable, uh, not necessarily unknowable. This is uh, straight out of the Wikipedia article. So, um, uh, and, and it also goes, that same t uh, quote goes on to say, therefore one, sh uh, therefore one uh, with will withhold judgment until if slash more, uh, until slash if evidence, more evidence is available. That's the position I'm in right now. And I'm going to make this quite clear. The uh, sorry, um, uh, and this is to the atheists and theists out there, not uh, directly to you. This is to other people who might be watching. The reason I posted this challenge is um, the debate between the creationist element, which uh, is quite literally a fundamentalist interpretation of a particular religion, and the atheist and the militant atheistic movement have been going on for a long time now, and uh, here on YouTube, and both sides are claiming that they have scientific evidence for their exact uh, for their exact same side. The atheists um, who I've met, particularly uh, Captain Awesome, um, uh, quite a few others as well, have actually have claimed. Um, uh, well, I just can't remember if it was actually him or if it was one of the others. But I think it was the Amazing Atheist as well, um, and quite a few others have said, uh, you know, if you want to prove, uh, you know, if you want to, you know. Um, I take uh, I take uh, the there you know there being no evidence for God there's no scientific evidence for God so therefore God is is less likely. Um, uh, Richard Dawkins himself in one, in a debate recently said um, uh, God is possible but highly unlikely. So when I hear statements from that uh, like that from atheists. Um, you know, and I'm an, you know, I, I genuinely, the reason I brought up the M theory issue, and this is the reason I'm an agnostic, is because of the fact that, um, that the M theory or the computer simulation issue, um, allows for the possibility of a higher power. And I want to make some, um, there's a, uh, I may actually dispute, uh, I may also dispute your quote about the, um, about the idea that creator does not necessarily, uh, um, that, that a, uh, that a creator, uh, of such would not fall under the category of God. Well, we would seem like gods to primitive people, uh, to people from several thousand years ago. The Europeans at one point, uh, Cortez, who had uh, uh, advanced weaponry, uh, you, know, hundred, uh, you know, thousands of years in advance of the Mayans, uh, was mistaken for a god. Um, the, the, uh, you know, the definition of god is a relative term. The definition of, uh, of omnipotence or supernatural is a relative term. It's all based on the natural sphere of the world that you happen to be living in. Um, a quote by Arthur C. Clarke uh, one, um, uh, that was done by, uh, by Arthur C. Clarke uh, once said um, uh, the, uh, well, basically the term was indistinguishable from magic. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Robert Heinlein also stated this as one man's magic is another man's technology. Supernatural is a null word. Um, and so the thing is that uh, even Dawkins in an interview uh, and, and Dawkins in an interview also stated that if there were any being who were sufficiently advanced, uh, you know, that we, that, uh, you know, with power sufficiently advanced and uh, understanding sufficiently advanced, that we would worship them as a god because they were so far advanced compared to us, you know, i.e., you know, their, their appearance appeared to be so miraculous that we couldn't understand it. 
um, then we would worship them as a god, but they would be the end product of an evolutionary cycle. Now, the reason I'm quoting Dawkins on this one is because this is this is giving a relevant point here, and the relevant point is is that there may a, a creator, any person or entity who had who had technology that advanced that they could create a universe via high processing speed computers or um, or uh, uh, you know manipulation of parallel universes or anything like that. Anybody who had technology that far advanced would chances are be several thousand or million years in advanced technology of ours. Which means chances are, um, you know, they would have a whole bunch of other technology which would make them seem godlike. So, you know, compared to our stance, we would be right to worship them as gods, or uh, or at least to perceive them uh, perceive of them as gods. So, um, I'm not disputing the existence of a god. I'm, uh, I, you know, and the thing is that, um, and you also straw manned my uh, my video a little bit where you're saying that uh, that I take that therefore I'm debunking the uh, the theistic uh, prospects, uh, you know. Or that I'm uh, that I'm uh, uh, automatically assuming there is no God because there's no scientific evidence for him. If I were doing that, I wouldn't have made the same request of athe. I wouldn't have made, uh, po posted the challenge to atheists as well. The the point I'm trying to make here is that if both sides of this issue, uh, if if atheists are claiming that there is no scientific evidence and that scientific evidence is required to for a God's existence and that God is highly unlikely, then I'm going to say, well, okay, well then the exact same onus is on you. If there is, if if we are the original universe or some natural phenomena, you know, uh, something out of nothing or or something out of something else created our universe, whatever that is, you have to have scientific evidence that it formed naturally. If you're going to make that claim that God is less likely, you have to demonstrate that. And on the theistic side, um, I would say to them, if you are claiming that there is a supernatural entity who created our universe, or um, you know, or, or caused intelligent design along those lines, then I would demand the same scientific evidence of you. If you know, if, if you, empiricism is the whole concept of trying to understand how our world works. Now I know this is a philosophical question or what have you, but um, based on mild agnosticism, based on the de uh, again, we, based on weak agnosticism, again, that the um, that the that the view of the uh, i.e. the view that the existence or non-existence of any deity is currently unknown but is not necessarily un not necessarily unknowable means that a person may well, that we can't know now and that's the position I hold we can't know now but if science does come along and demonstrate you know high levels of technology you know much higher than beyond our comprehension could form a universe and such a being could also have other high advanced levels of technology that allows for a possibility of a god now the thing is that the the reason why i'm saying it's 50 50 is because of the fact that in on, on an empirical standpoint right now we don't have enough evidence to assess whether it is more likely or less likely that's the position i'm holding as i have not seen any evidence for either position i.e either either theistic or atheistic i'm giving the default position of 50 50 it either exists or does not exist and then um and then as other uh, evidence, either indirect or direct, comes along, then the probability shifts in one format or another. Hence, I'm an agnostic based on an empirical standpoint. I, I, I hold weak agnosticism on the grounds that, we, do not na that we, do, we don't know now, but that we could possibly know at a future point whether or not a god exists. There could be other evidence coming along the way that would allow us to determine that. So... Ba uh, based on those grounds, that's where um, you know uh, agnostic. I don't know. I, uh, I I'm holding weak agnosticism. Um, and by the way, uh, one other point: the bit where you said I don't know and I don't care, that's not weak agnosticism. That's what's called apathetic agnosticism. The view that there is no proof uh, what, um, uh, in, uh, of either of the existence or non-existence of a deity, but since uh, uh, the deity um, that appears uh, that may exist appears unconcerned for the universe or the welfare of its inhabitants, the question is largely academic anyway. I don't consider it academic. I consider it that we don't, that we can't know right now. That's the difference between, uh, that's the difference between agnostic, uh, between weak agnosticism and apathetic agnosticism. I am a rationalist, but I'm a weak agnostic. I believe that at some point in the future we can know, and um, uh, I believe that in some point in the future we can know, but just at the present time we don't have enough evidence one way or another to assess. Hence why I speak as an agnostic as opposed to an atheist. And that's why I made the challenge to atheists as well as to theists. Uh, I hope that helps clarify it a bit. Um, uh, and uh, to, uh, and uh, you said if I'm agnostic, you were going to issue a challenge to me to say why we can't know. 
Well, I hope that in this answer I've also covered that as well. Toodles!